Okay. So the next thing we need to do is create a little bit of a hot spot to represent the sun or the moon in this instance. So if we go new, solid, and we'll make this one white, uh, just with a hint of hint of blue in it. We'll go OK. And we want to give that a mask as well. And I'm just using Control T to bring it into something that's a little more round. Uh, something about that big's fine. And we'll turn that into a 3D layer. We'll rotate it and we'll move it up so that it's above. And we can also place it below in the stack. And that's going to be fine. And we'll switch that to a add and we'll probably give it a bit of blur as well, it's just a bit of uh, fast blur is fine. Just blur it out. And we'll just make sure that that mask has got a bit of feathering on it. Give it about 30 on the feather. And that's fine. So the next thing we need to do is duplicate our surface noise. Control D. And we'll just isolate that click layer precompose and we'll call this shine yeah that's going to work fine okay so now that we precompose that uh, our shine layer back here in our master comp can can house our shine We'll crank up the boost light for now so we can see what we're doing. We're going to move the uh, source point up above our layers there. We're going to change our colorize to, I'm going to leave it with three color, but we're going to go with a greeny blue somewhere in this range here. And the red is going to be a deeper deeper green, blue, something like that. Click OK. And we're going to increase the, the boost light a bit. Just go change the uh, transfer mode to normal, but slide the opacity source right out. And the ray length will increase the ray length quite a bit. Even at about 8. And in the pre-process, we're just going to slide that up to about 40 and that'll allow us to boost the light a little bit more and that's working fine I'm just going to RAM preview that okay that's our RAM preview done and it looks like it's working fine so what we'll do now is take this uh, surface noise and we're going to give it a little bit of a color treatment so the first thing we'll do is add a color correction tint and the white we're going to bring a bit of a bit of blue into it the bluey green something like that I'll just zoom in a little so we can see what we're doing I'm getting quite a lot of banding there, so what I'm going to do is just go into the project and swap to a 16-bit just by holding Alt and clicking on the 8-bit we get 16-bit and that's reduced a lot of the banding that was happening there. Okay, that surface is uh, starting to look pretty good and just isolate that for a second. It's that's working pretty well. And I might even just put a little bit of see what a little bit of glow looks like. Just reduce the intensity down to 0.5 
uh, threshold just play with the threshold until you get something that you like yeah something like that's fine that's quite okay now I, th I think what we'll do is just move our I'll just rename this layer to moon we're going to move our moon above our or above everything let's see what that looks like there that's not too bad but what we need to do is just duplicate our surface noise comp control D bring it to the top get rid of the glow and the tint and use it as a luma mat for the moon and so now we have our moon that's broken up by that and that's working pretty nicely so the moon's working fine our light rays are working fine it's getting pretty close now what we can do is bring in our school tuna school and what we want to do is drop it down into our master comp and we'll put it on top of the shine and we'll worry about the color correction shortly just hide it for now we're just going to create our floaty particles so if you go new solid and we're going to call this one floaties click ok and just zoom in here a little bit we're going to give it a effect of trap code particular and we want to go into the emitter settings switch off the velocity down to zero all those velocity settings down to zero and we'll just isolate this layer for now so we can see what we're doing and we'll do our same with our particle creation at frame zero we'll click a keyframe crank it up to about 2000 and then at frame one we're going to wind that down to zero and we're going to use a box emitter type and we're going to scale our box out in size and the emitter size in height we're going to scale it up a little and in depth we're really going to crank it maybe 2500 and that's probably what we're looking for there and the next thing we need to do is come down to our particles give it a life of 12 seconds just so that they last the entire animation we can take the sphere feather off bring the size down to about 1.2 and let's let's go a size random of about 50 and opacity random of about 50 and that's probably looking pretty good and the next the last thing we need to do with that is just give it a velocity of about three and what that's going to do is very slowly move those particles around as the animation moves through now remembering that the first few frames of this animation are fairly useless so if you come through to about five frames and then set your work area bracket to there then you won't accidentally render the first frame which has no no particles and no fish so that's looking pretty good and the next thing we need to do now is give that a bit of a blur actually we can take care of the blur that we need by including a camera so let's Let's create a layer new new camera and we'll leave it with the preset of 35 millimeters click OK and just with that camera selected click AA and we're going to switch on the depth of field and we're going to crank up that blur level to about 300 that's just going to give us a little bit of depth of field with there now let's grab our floaties particular and Let's just slide our z, z direction in and out a little 
just so that we get a couple of floaties close to camera and we'll just make sure that our full render depth of field is switched on for that down the bottom and that's working fine some of those particles are just a little bit big so let's just reduce the size and the particle settings there We'll go down to say 0.9 and that's going to give us what we need okay so we'll just switch everything back on there switch our tuner school on and we need to do a little bit of color correction on those guys so just with our tuner school selected we're going to add a color correction tint and we're going to knock that back to about 50, maybe a little bit more. Drop it down to about 30. Let's bring our amount down to about 25 on the tint. And we'll use the color correction curves instead. And what we'll do is just drop our general level down, bring up our blue and increase our blue and we'll take some red out of it a bit more on the red Ooh. and we'll increase the green just slightly as well and we'll maybe just a little bit a little bit brighter something like that it's probably going to give us what we want now you'll notice that the bottom of the fish should really have a little bit darker so let's go back to our tuner comp and bring up our tuner and what we're going to do is create a layer new adjustment layer and we'll use a color correction exposure and we're going to bring the exposure down on on the whole image a little bit more something like that and then with that selected we're going to use our pen tool we'll click somewhere near the mouth here and we're just going to create a bit of a mask that just goes around the bottom of our fish like so we'll bring up our mask settings just to increase the feather a little bit blow the feather out that's looking pretty good so now when we look in our master comp, we've got some darkness happening underneath the fish, and that's what we need. Probably getting a little bit too much blue on that. Maybe bring up the blue on the curves. Just drop that out a little bit and the green a little bit just make sure we don't have any red on it and the RGB we probably need to something like that okay so our fish are working pretty good there We might even just, just on underneath that, do a quick fix with the brightness and contrast. Just bring a bit of brightness back into our fish. Just a little bit. Knock some contrast out of it. Something like that. So that's working pretty well now. and that's that's getting close to pretty much it i mean there's plenty of things that we could play with and um that's the beauty of after effects is you could tweak for hours but i think we're getting getting the effect the way we want it there um you can always go back into your tuner school and duplicate control d the tuner 
we'll just rename this one far we'll just isolate it change a few settings first thing we'll change is the amount we'll kick that up to about 700 and we'll come down to the size reduce the size down to about 30 the vanishing point what we'll do is slide that right out it's just so that we can reposition our emitter so we'll grab the emitter push it push it right off in the z-axis something like that just check why we've only got oh 700 should be the amount and that gives us like a secondary school happening over there and by having a different amount they'll be in a different pattern to our our initial school and what we can do with those guys because they're far away we can just tint them so I'll just come in a little bit on our layer here and with the far particles selected just bring up color correction tint and with the white let's just bring it into that greeny color click OK and we'll see how that looks now and because we've got tint on our our tuna school layer back out here in the comp what we're going to need to do is grab that guy and ramp that right up about there and what we might do is bring up T and bring the opacity of the layer down to about 60 maybe even further 50 so now when we go back that's working pretty well just bring that in a little closer probably don't need the tint now that I've reduced the uh, the opacity there so select those far particles get rid of the tint maybe bring the opacity down to 35 and now in our master you'll see that they're working working quite well and we might just offset the the particle emitter a little bit slide it over make it a little a little lower a little more to the left and reduce the wind a little bit down to minus 30 and that helps helps with a bit of depth so that's working fine we'll go back to our master comp and we'll give that a test render and see how we go okay back from that test render everything seems to be working fine there the uh, just come in a little bit we've got our volumetric light from the top which is sort of moving because of the noise on the surface we've got our fish that are swimming um, as well as moving in their school We could probably introduce a little bit of motion blur to those fish as well. But as you can see, the effect's working pretty nicely there. One thing we could do is brighten the uh, brighten the image up a little bit. We could try making shine our shine layer a screen screen layer and see see how that goes. Didn't have a great deal of effect but it should if we take our background layer and just bring our color 
up a little bit there and our bottom color just a little bit more into the green something like that and that's working nicely so we'll just zoom this up a little bit we'll give it one more ram preview okay back from that ram preview we'll take a look and that seems to be working fine our fish are swimming through there so I strongly suggest that you get on to Google image and download dozens of different sorts of fish and for every school particle system you can use a, a different pre-composition with a different fish uh, cut up in it and you know maybe add some jellyfish even even loop the particle system and use it uh, as a screensaver or, or to turn your television into a, a big fish bowl but I hope we've touched on some uh, some good processes there that, that can get you thinking and that you can use in your work okay there was one last thing that we uh, missed there so I'm just going to make this last this last change what we're going to do in our master comp is we're going to create a new solid and we're going to call it caustic click OK and we'll drag that down just above our tuner school and we're going to go into our effects panel and create a noise fractal noise and the type of noise we're looking for is uh, strings and we want to make it a noise type of spline and we're going to decrease the brightness and increase the contrast maybe bring the brightness up a little bit something like that and let's use the transform to decrease the scale actually I'll animate the offset the uh, evolution so alt click on the stopwatch and type time times 100 and you'll see that that's going to give us this caustic effect and now we'll just bring the scale down a little bit more Oh, not too much about there make it six and we get that effect there and we'll just duplicate our tuner school control D move it above the caustic effect and get rid of the curves and the tint and the brightness effect and we're going to use the tuner school to alpha mat the caustic effect and then we'll turn the caustic layer into overlay no make it screen and we're just going to bring up the opacity and we're going to bring that down to about 35 should be fine probably a little bit more make it 25 and that's working fine I think what we can do also with that caustic selected is just give it a blur sharpen fast blur of just one pixel and then maybe bring it back up to 35 and that's going to work fine and I'll give that a give that a render and we'll have a look at that okay so there's our caustic effect now over the top of the fish and it's working quite nicely 
and the fish appear now that they're swimming through the water the caustic effect is coming from that surface light coming through and that's that's working quite nicely so once again until next time bye for now